Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. We're going to talk about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Walt Disney World. Yeah, we're going to talk about the East Coast version of the Star Wars land that the media loves to use as a punching bag and uh, how it might attract more people on the East Coast than it is on the West Coast. They're going to use booze. They're going to use booze to attract more people to the East Coast version of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, according to several media outlets. In fact, if you search Galaxy's Edge today on Google News, you're going to find nothing but articles about the booze. So they're going to have spiked green milk, blue milk, all kinds of booze in Galaxy's Edge. And uh, you can drink your troubles away. You can drink away The Last Jedi, maybe, maybe. And uh, just, you know, everything's better with alcohol, right? Everything is better with alcohol, including Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So before we get into the video, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. It helps the channel grow. We've been growing at a tremendous rate over the last couple months and we thank you for that. So let's talk more about Galaxy's Edge. Of course, you know we, we said before that the uh, Disneyland version of Galaxy's Edge, if you've been watching the channel, kind of landed with a thud out in California. It did not bring the crowds they expected it to bring. And there's a variety of reasons for that. I mean, a lot of people said it's because of the uh, AP blackout dates, the annual Passover blackout dates, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it still should have brought more people being Star Wars. Uh, personally, I think it's the quote unquote brand fatigue. I think people just aren't into Star Wars enough to pay the ridiculous prices Disney is asking for to visit uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, especially when it's only got one ride open and uh it's just it's not based on the original trilogy it's not a very um it's it's not very impressive for star wars fans uh so this is coming from theme park insider which is actually a, a very reputable theme park site and uh, they're they're postulating they're asking a question will drinks make the difference at disney world's galaxy's edge again galaxy's edge is open in disneyland uh, has been open since the end of may but it will be opening in walt disney world at the end of this month the end of august now they're already doing previews a lot of people have been in taking photos it's basically the same thing as disneyland's not exactly the same uh, actually i was in it a couple of months ago as they were still building it and i was told it was going to be exactly the same thing as disneyland it's not quite there's some differences but anyway i digress so this is coming from theme park insider with disneyland star wars galaxy's edge not delivering the wall-to-wall -wall crowds that disney's original theme park braced itself for this summer uh, with walt disney world will walt disney world do anything different when it opens its installations of the new star wars land this month yes it's gonna pour a lot more booze I'm sure Disney executives are drinking more heavily these days. Uh, I'm sure they are because Galaxy's Edge has been a huge black eye for Disney parks. And, uh, you know, this comes right after Universal made the announcement of their third theme park, which is, you know, 99.9% .9 guaranteed to have Nintendo, which I'm sorry, Nintendo is a much bigger deal than Star Wars these days. And uh, even if it's a couple of years off, I think it's going to be a huge, huge threat to Disney because everybody's excited about Nintendo. Everybody's talking about Nintendo, and the only thing Disney can muster up for Star Wars is we've got alcohol. So when Galaxy's Edge opened on May 31st in Disneyland, Ogus Cantina became the first location in the park's 64-year history to sell alcohol to the public in Disneyland. Yeah, you're not allowed to sell alcohol in Disneyland. However, you can leave the park and get alcohol at virtually any of the restaurants in downtown Disney or in California Adventure. But uh, Walt did not want alcohol in Disneyland. So what do they do? They throw Star Wars into Disneyland and they serve alcohol. However, Walt Disney World, you can drink all over the damn place. Uh, that dry legacy influenced Disney's decision to take it slow with the introduction of alcohol into the park. No such history impairs Disney's ability to sling drinks like an Old West saloon host in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Not only will Oga be open for business at Walt Disney World's installation of the Black Spire Outpost, but you'll be able to buy hard beverages at Docking Bay 7, Ronto Roasters, and even the Milk Stand. That location serves the land's blue and green milk, which I've heard is pretty gross, actually, uh, with the added options of rum in the blue and tequila in the green at Disney World. Ronto Roasters will be offering... Uh, Trandoshan Ale, a spiced wheat ale, as well as Coruscant Cooler. Is that like Ecto-1, Ecto Ecto-Cooler? With Kentucky Bourbon. 
You know, I, I wouldn't think Kentucky bourbon would go in the course not cooler, but there we go. Cherry liqueur, fortified wine, cranberry, and lime juice. So, will drinks be enough to rally crowds at Disney World, or will the inherent differences between the visitor mix at Disneyland and Disney World drive more traffic there? Or will many fans also hold off until the second ride, Rise of the Resistance, is open? Fortunately, for those who prefer to visit Disney in Florida, they won't have to wait. Uh, they are going to open Rise of the Resistance before Disneyland's version. They're going to open it in December, uh, right before Episode 9. Episode 9, the highly anticipated, I am, note that sarcasm uh, in my voice, the highly anticipated uh, final chapter of the Skywalker saga. Um, maybe it's a mercy killing at this point. So everybody's talking about the booze. I mean, literally, that's all the news on Galaxy's Edge this weekend is the booze. They're not talking about, hey, Galaxy's Edge looks pretty cool. I mean, we've got some photos of the differences between the uh, Disney World version and the Disneyland versions. Virtually identical, some coloration differences. Uh, some of the props are a little bit different. No hidden Mickey there, I see. Uh, but everybody's just talking about the booze, you know? So, I mean, look, a lot of people like to drink in Walt Disney World, but when that's your selling point, hey, Nintendo's coming. Nintendo's coming to Universal. But we've got spiked uh, green milk. We've got spiked green milk in uh, Disney World. So this is uh, this is really interesting to to see that this is where they're going with it. But yeah, there's going to be booze. There's going to be spiked green milk. Does that does that really make you want to go anymore? I, I don't really care. <laughs> it's like you you know it's going to be like 15, 20 bucks for a spiked green milk spiked green milk so i guess uh luke uh luke got that uh that uh, alien drunk before he grabbed her nipple without consent milked her chugged it i don't know i don't know so speaking of beverages and galaxy's edge uh going out to wdw news today which I, i'm surprised they were actually invited to a preview now i don't know if it was a media preview or a cast member preview but they were invited to a preview event just a few weeks ago we talked about this disney actually attacked wdw news today using the disney parks blog they actually attacked this fan site that's been around for 12 years using the parks blog accusing them of spreading false rumors now they didn't call them out by name but uh it was very very clear who they were talking about regardless they were actually invited to the preview event they have a bunch of pictures up. This is probably busier than you're going to see it at Disneyland, uh, the preview event. I'm assuming it's probably cast members or AP previews. Uh, but you go down and uh, they've got those those really cool sort of like thermal detonator Cokes. Yeah, they're six bucks. Six bucks for a Coke. Six bucks for a Coke at uh, Galaxy's Edge. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I do think, as I said before, I do think that Galaxy's Edge and Disney World is going to have more people just because of the nature of the beast uh, at Disney World versus Disneyland. Disney World is, you know, a, a global a global audience. Uh, people come for week-long vacations. You know, uh, Hollywood Studios right now doesn't really have a lot to do, so people are definitely waiting for Galaxy's Edge to open. I do have to wonder, though, because the fact that they are doing a free dining offer, it tells me that they're not getting people to book this year. And I think a lot of people are waiting until the other ride is open, waiting until some of the construction uh, has died down at Disney World, especially Hollywood. Hollywood Studios, if you've been there in the last year or two, is, is like one big construction site. So I think some people are waiting for that. But uh, yeah, alcohol. Alcohol solves everything. Uh, alcohol sol solves everything. Just don't drink when you're plotting out a sequel trilogy. Don't drink when you're plotting out the sequel to the, the most popular uh, science fantasy franchise of all time. Because maybe that's what happened with The Last Jedi. Everybody was drinking. I, I don't know. So we will keep on top of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disney World 2. I think this is a a very relevant thing to this channel because you know we, we have talked a, a good deal about Star Wars. Uh, we do talk about uh, Disney sometimes. And Galaxy's Edge is really like, this is really what Disney was banking on. The movies, yeah, sure, they're making money, but they wanted the theme park rights. They wanted to be able to make a Star Wars theme park. They they bought Lucasfilm specifically to milk this franchise. Green, blue, alcohol, no alcohol. They wanted to milk this franchise forever. And we're seeing that the merchandise sales 
in, in, in general retail, the toys, they're not selling. Uh, we're seeing that people aren't coming to Galaxy's Edge and Disneyland like they expected. I don't know how it's going to work in Disney World, but this is probably not the reaction that Disney was hoping for. The last Star Wars movie that was released theatrically, Solo, was a bomb. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with Episode Nine, but Solo was a bomb. You know, so Star Wars clearly is not the evergreen property that Disney thought it was going to be. At least it's not the evergreen property on Disney's watch. With the right people in charge, it could be. Just it's very clear that they're doing something wrong. So we'll see what happens both with Galaxy's Edge this year and with Episode Nine, and see where Star Wars is in 2020. Uh, right now, I don't have a lot of hope for the franchise. I really, other than The Mandalorian, there's really nothing Star Wars I'm interested in. And we were actually super fans. We were huge fans here, and I just, I just don't care anymore. And I think a lot of people just don't care anymore. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be counting down the days until they open Nintendo at Universal. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.